Store closes after Nike boycott. More Colin Kaepernick fans than I realized. Oh. Oh, shit. So this store, Primetime Sports in Colorado, decided after the uh, Colin Kaepernick Nike ad that he was just boycotting Nike products at this store. Uh, after being open for more than 20 years, its doors are closing due to pulling the same stunt as 32 NFL teams, blackballing Colin Kaepernick. Except this time it goes further. Uh, Stephen Martin, owner of the primetime of primetime sports, decided in September to remove all Nike gear from his store. Well, that's, I mean, obviously why he closed. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Like, it's not the fact that Co- There's so many Colin Kaepernick fans out there. It's that you took one of the most popular brands of sports clothing, if not the most popular, well, the NFL, and just removed it from your sports store. Well, like, okay, like he, he has a sports store, right? So the NFL, as far as like they have like a lot of things, they have official sponsors. So the the only company that makes NFL jerseys is Nike. So that basically is taking all the NFL gear. That's being made out of your store at a, at a sports store where people are going to plus Nike athletic stuff and shoes and everything. That's a big seller. Like he's basically hamstringing himself by taking the most popular brand of sporting uh, gear <laughs> out of his store. I love this. This just makes going me out petty. of business to own the libs. Hey, all you dumb shits that boycotted Gillette and shit. Remember when we did that whole fucking bit about how you were just putting money in the pockets of these uh, companies? Well, here's a dude that owned a sports store and decided to do the equivalent to what you did and throw away all his Nike. Now he doesn't have a store anymore. Ha 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 ha! Ha ha ha! Suck it up, you idiots! Yeah, just like keep putting money in Gillette's pocket, you dumb, easily manipulated fucks, man. Just line up at that corporate cock to take a suck. <laughs> Paul's been boycotting Gillette for years. Yeah. Years. Yeah, I got proof of that boycott right here on my face. Boycotting all the razor companies. Even, just in the event that Schick puts out an equally obnoxious ad at some point in the future, Paul's like, nah, I nope. ain't even supporting that. Nope. I know all these companies are going to dip their, their pin in that ink, so I'm boycotting everything. Boycott the world. I'm moving to a tree. So you're gonna like this one, Paul. I, I, well, Scott, you might like it too, because it's about a, it's about a real life superhero, man. Cool, dude. Michigan powerlifter heroically lifts vehicle pinned on top of man after accident. Damn! Now that is a lucky dude to have nearby when you get in an accident. Yeah, no lie, dude. <laughs> Just happened to be a powerlifter driving <laughs> by. <laughs> Holy shit, man. You're pinned. <coughs> hey, no problem, buddy. This dude's got an angel looking over him. A Michigan powerlifter was hailed as a hero last week after he helped a man who was uh, pinned underneath a two-ton SUV. Ryan Belcher, 29, was the end of his work uh, day Thursday when he heard a loud crash outside. He explained to Fox and Friends on Monday. He noticed a Jeep Cherokee flipped upside down and rushed outside towards the wreckage. When he got there, he found a man trapped underneath the vehicle calling out for help. Uh, when I first approached the vehicle, there was f- uh, a good four men there, and they were all trying to move this vehicle, and I seen it wasn't happening, so I figured what a better time, what a better time now to use what I know I can actually do. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. <laughs> well, not he's not, an, a, he's not, not a power an, speaker. Yeah, okay. yeah, he's not an English professor. He's I lift lifter. vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> see thing, me do thing. <laughs> me save you. I jumped right in. He's 350 pounds. Oh, dude, this is a beefy dude. I seen a window that was broke. Can you just like translate to English, please? I seen a window that was broken out of the back of the vehicle. And I knew if I could swing the vehicle in a certain direction, I could free him from that pull. So I just stuck my arms in and I don't know. I just grabbed it, lifted it up and started pushing and all I heard was, that's enough. We could get him. Don't fuck with this guy. Yeah, I mean... I wouldn't make fun of his English to his face. That's, that's for some sure. some lucky-ass shit right there that there just happened to be, like, a dude that can deadlift 950 pounds. Yeah, a 350-pound fucking power lifter just happens to see your crash. Uh, I just lift it and move it, you know? Yeah. And now he's free. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, dude. Bless him, though, dude. He's yeah. one of the good dumbs. Rock on. Yeah, dude. This He's is why the dumbs are not all bad, man. Covington High Students Legal Team sues Washington Post. Good. 
Attorneys representing the Kentucky high school student involved in a confrontation that went viral on social media last month announced Tuesday they were suing the Washington Post for $250 million in compensatory and punitive damages. Dude, that smug kid that everybody hated immediately is going to be a multimillionaire, maybe. (laughs) The lawsuit, which was filed in federal court in Kentucky, accused the Post of practicing a modern-day form of McCarthyism by targeting Nicholas Sandman and using its vast financial resources to enter the bully pulpit by publishing a series of false and defamatory print and online articles to smear a young boy who was, in its view, an acceptable casualty in their war against the president. I don't disagree with it. Yeah, I mean, where's the inaccurate part? Um, I just don't know if it's much of a legal case, but I mean, who knows? I don't think it is. I think it should be, like, I hope that they win because I think a blow needs to be dealt to these media companies to start doing their fucking due diligence and following up on these stories and stop crafting narratives. If you're going to report on news, report the facts as you can collect. And we've them. just seen it. What, what's that? Uh, I think you made a video about him, TJ. What's that? Uh, the dude that said he was attacked. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What's, Jesse. Oh, Jesse Smollett. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the name. Jesse Smollett. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, that was there's way more obvious criminal elements there. Uh, this I don't know, because, I mean, we have uh Really difficult libel laws in this country because we're trying to protect uh, freedom of speech and stuff. So, but I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that how the quickly the media runs the story because you know, everyone heard about that. Oh well, I mean, like it was just like he was attacked and it was like everyone just it, no. I mean, it's like, just like well, the, the here's media, the facts. That's it. The mainstream media knew that story smelled bad. I mean, like the, the shit that they covered just because it's anti-Trump, ludicrous. Like if you if you tell them. I mean, it, it just seems like if you have any story about someone wearing a MAGA hat or doing racism, any sort of dude, if Trump uses thing, a bathroom it's instantly believed. and somebody goes in after him and there's an odor, CNN's going to report on it. Right. And this wasn't even this is like I was attacked on the on the on the street in Chicago in a, in a neighborhood that is not only predominantly black, but also predominantly gay. So he's in a gay black neighborhood and two MAGA hat wearing white dudes pop out of the ether and beat the shit out of him and say, this is MAGA country in the middle of fucking Chicago. Right. And then vanish into the night, not being spotted by any security camera anywhere in a city that's littered with them. Um, and people, and the news media just unskeptically says, yep, I just absolutely believe the story. Just no, there's no doubt in my mind. Well, Cause I know it's going to, it's going to get them a bunch and of it's, And it was the same with the Covington uh, Catholic kids. And from this story, I mean, it was just like, Oh, they were chanting "build the wall," which doesn't even make sense well, to it, chant well, at Native Americans. Just they never bait. did it. It's just clickbait to make money, dude. Dude, it it is like a crying shame how our fourth estate has decayed to this point. <clears throat> because this type of malfeasance that we're dealing with happened in the past, and one of the allies that the voting public, the average Joe, had. Was the fourth estate? They had voices like you know Edward R. Murrah and uh, you know uh, Cronkite that were actually committed in some way personally, whatever their personal politics were, to giving information to people so that they can make their own minds up. And we don't have that anymore. We've got infotainment. We've got if it bleeds, it leads. We've got run with it immediately. Don't look into the background because if we wait, you know we're not going to get as many clicks. That is what is driving. Our news media, the one of the pillars of our fucking democracy, the fourth estate, the flow of information from the government and the goings on in the world to the people so they can make an informed choice is rotted and become a billboard for corporate interest. An enemy of the people. <laughs> That's why I, you know, I, free, my support for free speech absolutism aside... I hope they find an angle to dig the Washington (laughs) Post and every other fucking media company that ran with this without doing their due diligence because they need to be taught a lesson. They need to get back in their fucking lane and start doing start doing informing, not entertaining. Stop hiring bubbleheads like Don Lemon. Hire actual newsmen. (coughs) They're all dead.